everybody. For day 12 of Commit's 30 Days of Yoga, we'll be getting our heart pumping and blood flowing in a high energy flow. Please remember to like and subscribe and stick around to the end of the video where we break down a pose from today's practice. Begin standing at the head of your mat in Mountain Pose. We are starting right away with three sun salutations. Inhale, Upward Salute. Exhale, Forward Fold. Inhale, Half Lift. Exhale, fold. Plant the palms, step or hop back to plank. Flow through chaturanga or lower down. Up dog or cobra. Downward facing dog. Step or hop to a forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Upward Salute. Exhale, hands to heart. Two more times. Inhale, Upward Salute. Exhale, Fold. To a half lift. And fold. To plank. Flow through. Down dog. Step or hop to a forward fold. Half lift. Fold. Upward salute. Hands to heart. One more time. Upward salute. Forward fold. Halfway lift, and fold, to plank, flow through, to down dog, step or hop to a forward fold, halfway lift, and fold. Upward salute. Hands to heart. Take the time to adjust as needed. Right leg, knee to chest. We're going to move from Warrior 3 and return to a single leg mountain pose five times. Let go of the leg, keeping it up, to Warrior 3. Return to standing, knee up, four more times. Three. Two, and last one. Step the right foot back to crescent lunge, arms up. We're doing five lunge pulses, straighten up both legs, reaching up. Lowering down, bending the knees, arms down, and back up. Four more. Three. Two. And one. Open up to warrior two. We'll be moving from extended side angle to reverse warrior five times, flowing with our breath. Exhale to extended side angle. Inhale to reverse warrior. Four more times, strong breath. Three. 
any more? Two more. Last set. Straighten the front leg to triangle pose. To pyramid pose, folding over that front leg. Step it back to Downward Facing Dog. Walk or hop to a forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale to Upward Salute. Exhale, hands to heart. Adjust as needed. We're doing that on the opposite side. Left leg, knee to chest. Let go of the leg, keeping the knee up to warrior three. to single leg mountain, knee up, four more times. Three more. Two. And last one. Step the left leg back to crescent lunge, arms up. Straighten up the legs and bring it all down for lunge pulses five times. Four. Three. Two more. And last one. Open up to warrior two. Moving now from extended side angle to reverse warrior, flowing with our breath five times. Exhale, extended side angle. Inhale, reverse warrior. Four more. Three. Two. And last set. Straighten the front leg to triangle pose. To pyramid pose, folding over that front leg. Step it back to down dog. From here we'll be moving to dolphin pose and then back to down dog five times. 
you can lower and lift the elbows together or one at a time depending on where you're at. Get strong through the body and lower the forearms to dolphin. Press to down dog. Four more times. Dolphin. Down dog. Three more. Dolphin. Down dog. Two more times. Dolphin. Down dog. And last one to dolphin. And down dog. Next from down dog, we're doing spider lunges, alternating sides. Step the right foot to the outside of the right hand, lowering the hips, and back to down dog. Other side, left foot to the outside of the left hand, and back. Keep it going, moving at your own pace. Last set, pause on the last spider lunge, rotate to the long edge of your mat in a low side lunge or skandasana pose. You can keep your hands down on the mat for support or take them together at heart center. Shift to the opposite side. Maybe playing with your arm shapes here. Hands to heart or down. Let's shift again. Again, playing with our arm shapes. Rotate to the short edge of the mat, hands down, step it back to plank. Keeping the right hand down, we're flipping our plank to wild thing, stepping the left foot back. Return to plank and wild thing on the other side. Let's do that two more times on each side, rotating our planks, Stepping to wild thing, pressing those hips up. Other side. And last time, right hand down. Come through plank, other side. Back to plank. Next we're going to bend our knees and lean our hips back, then return to plank. Stay strong here. Lean it back and return to plank. We're doing eight more. Or as always, you are free to move at your own pace. Last one. After this final rep, small bend in the knees, we step or hop our feet to meet our hands as we lower to seated and then recline onto our backs. Knees bent, feet hip width apart, arms down at your sides, palms facing down. Let's go into some bridge pulses. 
moving slowly and with control, raising the hips and then lowering down almost all the way. We lift just before the tailbone touches down, sending those hips back up. On this next one, option to incorporate the arms, raising them overhead as you lift the hips, and then lowering everything down together. Keep it going. Last one. Coming all the way down, draw the knees in towards your chest. Hands on your legs. We're going to roll like a ball, rocking the body to seated, avoid touching the toes down, and then roll back, avoiding touching the head down. Let's do a few more. On this next one, remain in a seated position, taking your legs to a half boat and hold. Next, moving without touching your hands down or using your hands to assist you, we're going to roll to standing one to three times depending on where you're at. in standing and inhale your arms up overhead. Side bend to the right, to the left, to center, exhale hands to heart. Taking a few deep breaths here to finish up. to improve our balance and the strength all along the back of the body. So the first thing we want to think of in Warrior 3 is our contact with the ground, our base. We want to be as stable as possible. So we have one point of contact with the ground and that's the one foot that remains down. So let's take our left foot in this instance. We really want to make sure, just like when our hands are down, that our toes are spread wide and that we're pressing down evenly throughout all four corners of the foot or across the entire base of the foot. And just like with our hands when we're balancing a little bit, sometimes we might have to shift our weight back and forth and use our toes to kind of press us around and make sure that we're staying stable. So try to remember to remain active through that grounded foot. A slight bend in that knee is okay. And we're gonna make sure that we're staying really, really strong through this grounded leg all the way up to the root. Now the goal in Warrior 3 is to have that floating leg or that back leg to become parallel to the mat, our hips to remain square to the floor, our arms to float forward, biceps next to our ears, and our dristi or our gaze to remain down. We want to find that nice straight line from the tips of our fingers to our heel or the tips of our toes. Now in Warrior 3, we want to flex that extended leg. So our foot can remain flexed, toes pointing down. And I actually recommend this, particularly if you find it difficult to keep your hips squared off to the floor. If we're not flexing that foot, toes pointing down, we find a really strong point through the toes, keeping that foot really engaged. So we're gonna begin with our left foot down, spreading the toes wide, trying to find even pressure across the base of the foot. I'm going to keep a very slight bend in my knee here as I engage the muscles in the ground today. Floating my right foot, 
I'm going to begin to tilt down, and your arms can be the last thing that extends. So we're going to fold from the hips, and I'm going to keep my toes pointing down. As I mentioned, this makes it a lot easier to keep your hips squared down to the mat. And once I feel I'm in a parallel position, I can take my arms forward, and I'm going to gaze down or just slightly ahead of me. And I'm really squeezing through the back of my body and I'm really engaging the core, navel tucked in. I'm feeling a nice wrap around my ribs and that grounded leg is doing so much work. Something to look out for is that hip opening up. I've mentioned it a couple of times. We really want to make sure that that's something that we're focusing on strongly here is keeping that hip squared off to the mat. And once we're here, if you want to point through those toes, you can. But this is something that tends to happen here. We tend to open up a little bit through the hips. So really, really making sure that we're focusing on squaring off here. If you're a very beginner, or if you find warrior three particularly difficult, we can begin just by simply working on the balance of it all. So trying to remain in proper alignment, keeping the hips squared off to the front, folding from, in this instance here, the left hip fold. Arms can stay up or at your sides as you just begin to fold and then stop where you feel like that's where you can hold it. Arms can extend up here. And then over time, work to fold deeper and deeper eventually coming to parallel. A great way to modify warrior three while still keeping our arms extended forward is to use a wall, hands pressing up against it, or you can use the back of a chair. So in this case, you can begin as you normally would and then work to steady yourself once you're in position. Or you can begin with your hands on the chair and extend the leg back. Same thing with the wall. And finally, another way that we can modify warrior three is by using blocks, positioning them down. And in this case, our arms would not be extended forward. We're gonna be keeping them down and really focusing on the alignment through the lower part of the body and keeping the core engaged. So in this instance here, position the blocks shoulder width apart, and focus on keeping the hips squared off to the mat. And I'm pressing as tall as I can through my arms here, trying to get my upper body as parallel to the mat as I can. 